I think LMI has been crucial in where our state is going. This work resonates with people and watching LMI grow, it tells me that we're really on to something. You know, it seems like at every turn, there's a new challenge and obstacle. Uh, LMI and the collaboration that we've worked and the trust and that productive conflict, all those pieces, this is like a test for us. Welcome everyone to our third installment of the California Labor Management Initiative webinar series. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. We are very, very excited. My name is Gustavo Morales and I'm the Calamai Program Manager and I'm your host, your host today. Uh, we have our um, team from Dinuba Unified School District, our labor management team from Dinuba joining us today along with Julia Kopic, our uh, researcher for um, Calamai. The Calamai webinar series is an opportunity for the Calamai team and our partners to share tools, resources, and like today, district stories. Before we get started, we wanted to talk a little bit about the Zoom features. So um, <clears throat> we're gonna have our, our webinar through Zoom today, which means we kindly ask that you keep your microphone muted throughout the presentations. Um, we will have several opportunities to participate and engage with your colleagues from across the state. At those times, we'll prompt you to turn on your videos and microphones. Ed and I are excited also to show off some great features using the video program eCam. So you'll see that rolling script down below. So we invite you to add your name and what part of California you're joining us from in the chat. So also on the webinar, we're gonna have our very talented coordinator, Jesse. She is in the background and helping with any issues you might have. You can send her a direct message in the chat <clears throat> for any assistance. Finally, all PowerPoints, resources, and this video will be shared with you within, a, within about a week of today's presentation via email. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Ed Honowitz to give us a little background on the Cal uh, California Labor Management Initiative. Thanks, Gustavo. Um, Great to uh, have everyone join uh, us today. Uh, I'm Ed Honowitz, the Senior Project Director for the California Labor Management Initiative. And uh, again, we uh, really appreciate folks taking the time to uh, join us from across California and, uh, and beyond and uh, to have an opportunity to really see what uh, labor management partnership can look like uh, at, the, at the local level. Um, so I wanted to just give you a little bit of uh, background about uh, the Labor Management Initiative. And uh, so we are a, a project of the CDE Foundation. We work closely with the Department of Education, as well as uh, most of your state associations and other state agencies to try and expand and bring opportunities uh, for learning, convenings, um, and to extend capacity to uh, education leaders across California. Um, since uh, 2015, we have been working with uh, school district labor management teams, also with uh, county office labor management teams, and uh, have engaged, uh, I think now over 170 different uh, organizations as a part of the labor management initiative, and uh, from folks all over the state, uh, rural, urban, large, small, et cetera. Um, and uh, what we do is we try and provide a safe space for folks to come together. I think we're pretty neat, unique in that we've got a place for um, classified and certificated union leaders, uh, top administrators, superintendents, uh, HR directors, other central office staff, and board members to come together to learn, think, and share. Um, and as those teams continue working with us, they will typically uh, include site level staff, principals and building reps and others in order to deepen the work and continue moving this forward. Um, I wanted to share this. Some of you have seen this if you've been working with us and it's uh, a what we call a partnership continuum. And I think we're gonna put that document in the chat if you wanna click on that or save that. But, uh, you know, it really kind of describes this idea of, you know, different types of relationships between labor and management um, from, you know, pretty adversarial to real deep partnerships. And the reason we show you this is really the idea that uh, we're not locked into these uh, silos here. If you're intentional, if you're thinking about building capacity and tools and processes to increase communication, to increase trust and equity, then we can move across that um, and uh, build real labor management partnerships that the research shows can have real impacts on things like um, 
staff retention and student achievement. So we are excited to uh, you know, sh share Dinuba's story with you with some great leaders from Dinuba's labor management team. They'll give you some of their story of how they were able to move across this spectrum. And then uh, finally, I just wanted to share this, which um, comes to us from uh, Patrick Dolan and the Consortium for Educational Change, kind of a structure for how um, organizations can institutionalize some of this labor management partnership work. Um, so that's a district learning team, which would include like a superintendent and union leaders, uh, and in some cases, board members meeting, not just, uh, you know, occasionally or, you know, once a month by themselves to have a chat about what's blowing up or what's wrong or what needs to be addressed in a contract issue, but rather to include labor and management in regular problem solving, in helping roll out district initiatives in thinking together how to improve outcomes for students and staff. And then likewise, that gets repeated down at the site level with principals and building reps meeting regularly to problem solve, to build relationships, to build ideas and capacity together. So um, that you'll hear a, a bit as well, reflected in some of the work that uh, Dinuba has done. And uh, so, I wanted to, uh, at this point, pass it back over to uh, Gustavo, who will uh, give us a little more. Thanks, Ed. So uh, before we get started, I wanted to point everybody to our previous webinars. Um, the first one was from Simon Breakspear. So um, the uh, webinar really focused on building a three-step process for organizational learning and renewal, especially during this time of uncertainty really of trying to avoid a snapback to old habits and patterns of practice. So like Ed said, we've been bringing teams together over the past uh, eight, nine months. We have brought together over a thousand education leaders. So we wanted to point to you where we've heard <clears throat> the, 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 the most uh, people's uh, ability to really work with uh, some of the tools and resources to, to help their teams. So the second one we had was the uh, webinar with Ellen Pays and Michael Butler, <clears throat> prioritizing through uncertainty. So during that webinar, uh, we were able to hear about the steps of collaborative problem solving. The framework outlined how to organize teams for the kind of adaptive collaborative problem solving necessary as we deal with the increased uncertainty and complexity in public education. So we also wanted to point out that these two webinars are actually in our CalMy videos page on YouTube, which we're going to have the link to at the end. We invite you to take a look at these webinars as a team. We're also going to provide study guides that have guiding questions that might help you and your team really think about things differently as you view some of these webinars and put some of these tools into practice. Today, we're excited to have our friends in Dinuba join us and the list of panelists are here along with our education policy researcher, Dr. Julia Kopic. Dinuba Unified is located in Tulare County with about 6,700 students enrolled. Um, they are represented by CTA and CSEA. If you wanna know a little bit more, we invite you to take a look at the spotlight if you haven't already. The spotlight really highlights their labor management story, really addressing what steps they took in order to get to a functioning labor management team. In addition to what things they are doing through the COVID process, they are, they are really lifting up as examples that you might be able to use in your own labor management team. So with that, I wanted to take a quick moment to allow everybody to introduce themselves to each other. So we're gonna do a quick breakout. So this is that time I told you, we're gonna ask you to turn on your screens and turn on your um, video. Go ahead and unlock that microphone. And we're gonna put you into breakout groups. Um, during this time, we're gonna ask you to introduce yourselves and answer the following prompt. What themes, issues, approaches are you hoping the Dinuba team might discuss to help your own labor management team? So again, we're looking for what really are you looking for out of this webinar, especially that we're hoping the Dinuba team might talk about. It really is gonna help us. We have some questions put together, but we know uh, we're working with an active audience. So we would love to hear some of your questions. 
So in a moment, I'm gonna ask Jesse to put you into uh, groups about two or three. And during that time, we're gonna ask you to think about themes, issues, approaches, along with a small introduction. So we're gonna have five or six minutes and Jesse will put up a, uh, a reminder once it's almost time to come back. So with that, we're gonna ask you to go ahead and go into your breakout rooms and um, we will see you in about five to six minutes. All right. So thank you so much. If you have any questions from your breakout discussions for the Dynuba team, we're gonna invite you to add them to the chat now. Ed has the fun job of uh, putting all those questions together for the end Q&A. So again, uh, thank you and welcome back. If you have any questions from your breakout discussion for the Dynuba team, we invite you to add them to the chat. You can also add them throughout the, the conversation as well. So at this time, I'd like to invite our panelists to join me here in the spotlight so I don't look as big on screen for everybody. So um, we're gonna start placing everybody on there. All right, we're gonna start with introductions. So uh, Jesse, would you like to start us off with a, a quick introduction and then we'll uh, do round robin? Welcome everybody. Uh, Jesse Sanchez, principal in uh, Dinuba. Excellent, Greg. Hi guys, uh, Greg Garrison, uh, teacher union president. Uh, in the district, 20 years uh, in the union, actively uh, about 15 years. Excellent. Thanks. Joe? Yeah, I'm Joe Hernandez, superintendent of Dynuba Unified, and I've been superintendent. This is my 12th year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Marty? Great. Greetings and welcome, everyone. I'm uh, Marty Kochevar, assistant superintendent, uh, oversee communications and human resources. Been in this role for about eight years, 12 years in the district. Thank you so much, Anna. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Hernandez, CSCA president. I've been with Dinuba Unified School District about 19 years mm -hmm. and active in CSCA about five years. Excellent. Thank you. Julie? I'm Julie Kopic. I'm a researcher who's doing some work with LMI. Um, much of my work uh, revolves, well, all of my work revolves now around California policy, much of it around labor management relations, and you'll hear more about one piece of work in a few minutes. And with that, maybe we start with you, Julie, as the writer and researcher of the spotlight. We were hoping you could share some thoughts with us about the Dynuba labor management team and any key observations that came up for you, other than how great this group is. Yes, it is a great group. So, so let me start out by saying, I, I don't know, Ed, if, uh, Ed or Gustavo, if you want me to do this, but I'll do it anyway, just to introduce what Spotlight is. Um, so Spotlight is a new LMI occasional series. Dinuba was the first victim and it will present, um, uh, designed to prevent uh, uh, some stories of transformed labor management relations in select districts. So there'll be some number of them, two, three, four, over the period of probably a year or so. But the spotlight also marks the beginning of what uh, LMI hopes will be a larger uh, research program that will help educators and others better understand the ways in which labor management relations uh, functions in a variety of circumstances and impacts policy and practice. So I very much enjoyed uh, doing Dinuba as the first spotlight because their labor management dynamics were very interesting and very changed. So in the spotlight, I highlight four examples of Dinuba's collaborative labor management relations in action. I'm not stealing thunder, I hope, from the team, but I just wanna tick off those for um, actions and then tell you what I think they said to me. So one is Dinuba's school level problem solving. In other words, pushing solve problems that could be solved at the schools to the schools rather than counting on central office to solve them. A second is the district and CSEA meet and confer problem solving sessions. I hope Marty and Anna will say a little bit about those. The third is collegial contract negotiations and how they, the teachers transformed and district transformed contract negotiations so that there were groups of teachers and administrators who were deeply involved in the work around important topical areas. And the fourth, and um, 
perhaps most important for now is how they collaborated on a COVID response. But if I look across those four, I think they reinforce for me what I've long believed about labor management relations. And that is that collaborative relations are not about simple trust, but rather they involve a much more complicated set of collective understandings that are both forged and tested in the crucible of challenges. And the proof is really in the pudding. Effective and productive labor management relations are revealed, as you'll see from Dinuba's story, in the power to work through those challenges and come out the other end with a more nimble and uh, resourceful school system. Many Excellent. Sophisticated, Julia. <laughs> 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 nice yeah. Question. And maybe I'll turn it over to, to Joe and Marty to react a little bit. Uh, that's a, there's a, a lot of compliments, especially around the systems. And, and again, not just trust, right? There's something behind that trust. And what does that mean? So Joe and Marty, can you talk to us a little bit about um, how your team started working with Calamai and how you built those systems? Sure, absolutely. I'll be glad to get started. And then Marty will, will interject here in just a bit. So our, our team started working with Cal and Mai over, over five and a half years ago. And we attended, uh, I think that first Cal and Mai conference in San Diego. And we attended because we were having just lots of problems. Uh, constant fighting, it was adversarial. Uh, and I'm talking with both unions, CSEA and, and our DTA. It was, uh, it was quite toxic. And I remember even writing uh, as a part of our application process to get to that conference, <clears throat> I said, we're broken. <laughs> we are broken. We can't seem to solve things at all. Uh, we, we, we just, we're just fighting at every turn. And we were just, we're just frozen, frozen in conflict. Uh, so we attended uh, that conference and, and, and I'll, I'll say this, What's really important is that at that first conference, probably the biggest step we took was to go to that conference together. So the CSEA president and the DTA president and the school board member and myself, we hopped in a van and we traveled five and a half hours to San Diego. And that was probably the first big, huge step for us. And, and at that point in time, we met up with I think another 99 districts and uh, members of uh, CSEA and, and uh, uh, CTA and AXA and, and our uh, school board members, CSBA, got together and their, their message was, you know what, you need to learn how to work together. You got to put some of the old traditions and habits aside for the sake of the kids. But before that, Marty, what, what drove us to that conference? Uh, well, what your de early description of it is pretty is pretty right on. The uh, breaking point came uh, one evening. I've been in my role a couple years, and Mr. Garrison, uh, you know, things were just out escalating, and uh, Mr. Garrison came to a board meeting and actually stood at the podium just a bit from where I sit and asked for uh, the superintendent and my resignation that the, the union and the district had lost confidence in our ability to lead. You can imagine me and I'm, I, it, it was just, a, it was a, uh, potentially just a really low point. Um, and he kind of gave the spiel and then he brought a few people with him from the union and they stood in the back of the room. And this is a practice I think that had worked for the union for at least two previous uh, superintendents. That formula for the union had worked. We'll go to the board, we'll complain, we'll ask for resignations, we'll be on our way. So as soon as Greg dropped the bomb, the team starts to exit the building, ex exit the boardroom, and one of our, either board president at that time or one of the board members spoke up and said, hold on, wait, wait just a minute. And so that you, the, the look on the board, on the union members' faces, they stopped because they were, they were gonna be respectful. They did listen and the board supported uh, not only just management, they reiterated, reiterated their confidence in management, but they didn't just say, we're gonna stay put and you know what, we're gonna, thanks for your input, we're gonna stay with our team. They asked us to work together. 
that's what I recall. And so that probably was the start of, um, I think what the, essentially the message was, we want you to work together. And, and it, it made me that, that one of those first, um, the triangle on that prevented the one of those first slides that you showed uh, the the urgency to to get started was you you had the urgency to act I think that's kind of where we were and then the, after that the next step on the pyramid is to do the work but I think that formula the I think maybe the reason the union went that route is just that was an easy that was how that's how they knew how to to do business. There wasn't nothing had ever been presented. Another way of doing business had not been presented. So that's the that was the joint work. I also would take just a minute to credit the superintendent. I think um, we'd had there's been quite a bit of turnover before his arrival, and so he had spent some time with the board and built some trust with them. So I don't. I think in another year they may have acted a third time just as they always had, and they didn't. So clearly some work had been done with this superintendent who is who knows the area he's local he was born and raised not far from where um, he serves and so i think the time with the board definitely was a uh, impetus for change and as as they stopped and said no we have confidence in our team we have confidence in all of you to go do the work together so that's kind of where it went from there i think so so i, I think like an important piece on this because i'm sorry gustavo I no go ahead this is coming from our breakout group, so I think I, I feel compelled to answer it. Yeah. And that is, I mean, there were some really hard feelings mm -hmm. uh, between us. I mean, on both sides, the arrows were flying both ways. Mm -hmm. And things were said, you know, uh, over email or over the newspaper and just through the grapevine. And so when, when Greg and I met together for that first breakfast, yeah, there was that van ride, which was key. But that first breakfast was also key. What are you going to do? What are you going to talk about? It was really interesting is that we had that first breakfast and probably in 10, 15 minutes, we figured out something really important. We both wanted the same things. We wanted our kids to thrive and to learn. We wanted our school district to just be the best it could be. We had a lot in common, but to get to that point, in order to work together, all the old baggage, all the things that were said, all, the, all, the, all those arrows, you, you have to be able to forgive and put those behind you or you can never move ahead. Otherwise, there are going to be obstacles and you'll never move forward. So, so there has to be that strong element of forgiveness. And now we're going to move forward for the sake of our, of our kids and for the sake of the district entirely. So that's an important element that if you know, those, those things can be big obstacles, if you hold grudges. Wow, <laughs> it's going to be hard to move forward. Yeah, Sorry, I like how, no, no problem. I, I like how Marty framed that. You just, you have to get past the urgency and into the work, right? And, and, and move into that, something that Julie reminds us of that of frequently. So Greg and Anna, what, what were the reactions of uh, the members uh, for CSEA and your teachers union when you started hearing about collaboration, whether it was you there or, or you as a participant or member. Well, when we first started, I, you know, um, one part, and again, our story is so long to tell, but the, the union actually imploded. So we actually had a split in the union. Uh, I was a co-president for three years with two other guys. Uh, and so it broke apart and I was the last man standing. <laughs> so it was an election and everything, but I was the last one. Um, and it, you know, on that vote, we took a vote of confidence and it was uh, 288 teachers didn't want Joe or Marty there anymore. They didn't want them there. So that's why I went to the board meeting because 90% said they wanted them out. Um, but that was like Marty said, that was very, uh, that was our recipe. Uh, two superintendents and I think four principals in five years. Mm -hmm. So we were really good at getting rid of people, but not, not, not good at talking to people. Uh, reaction was, uh, I was the bad guy. Uh, they did not like that I talked to Dr. Joe or Marty or the district. Um, took a lot of heat over meeting with him, uh, especially public. Uh, we'd go to, you know, uh, social events in town, golf, you know, golf uh, tournaments for the schools or Lions Club, stuff like that. Uh, took a lot of heat. Um, but just you just have to, to march through it. Uh, I knew we were doing the right thing. Um, you know, one, one, one time it came up. I think Dr. Joe remembers this. I think we had maybe played golf for 30 minutes. It was a tournament. It was a civic tournament. You know, we took the day off. Day off. We donated our, our time and money. And within an hour, uh, the, our whole web, website, our internet was just blowing up with, you know, should your, should your union president uh, be at a golf tournament with your board president and your superintendent? 
And I thought, well, yeah, why wouldn't you want your union president with those two guys out being social and talking? Um, that took how long, Dr. Joe? Maybe three years to get past yeah. that. It's yeah. still there yeah. somewhat. Some of the older teachers are still biased the old ways, yeah. but yeah, yeah, maybe three years. So it, it wasn't very positive. Uh, it would have been real easy to quit and not, not pursue that. It really would have been real easy at that point to go back to the old way. Uh, but right, I'm really right. glad that we stuck it out. Really and now, what, what, what did you see and what, what are the changes you see now as the CSEA president? Well, when I came into the picture, uh, yes, there was a lot of negativity and bad feelings, you know, uh, with the district. But like I told my members, you know, this is I'm going to go in with a fresh start, you know, leave the past behind and build a relationship. That's a, a big uh, point there, you know, and we need to build the trust, the communication and learn to listen to each other's needs and also take action, you know, uh, because if you don't, if you just listen and don't take action, it's not going to go anywhere, you know, and so, you know, we, we started building, you know, the relationship and the trust, you know, and when the district, the uh, Dr. Joe or Marty say they're going to they're going to take action. They do. And till now, you know, the trust hasn't been broken, you know, and the communication, you know, is a big uh, point there too, you know, communicating from the top all the way to the bottom, everything, you know, and we need to disseminate it to our members, you know, what's, what's happening, you know, or what's going on, you know. So I think the trust and the communication and the listening is a big part you know, from both sides. Right, right. And I think that that follow through is critical, right? And it really comes into, if we're gonna do the work, we're gonna actually do it. We're all gonna to commit to it. Mm -hmm. Jesse, I'm, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm wondering, uh, we have a unique perspective of working on the sites. What, what, what did it look like when you started seeing uh, a different labor management team uh, forming in the district? Hey, great thoughtful question. I appreciate that, Gustavo. I, you know, let me just kind of give you this, this caveat. This is a lens in terms of what I saw and what I experienced. And um, initially, my first uh, board meeting was that board meeting uh, with Greg. Uh, and I was coming over from a different district. Uh, I'm coming over from a different, different district. And I hear this from the board. And I, I didn't even know who Greg was. And so um, they're, they're terminating the people that hired me. And so <laughs> I'm thinking, wow, this is going to be some heavy lifting coming to this, this district. Let me fast forward right here, right now, seven years later, seven years later, I have this, this team, um, has energized, provided some structures to understand the relationship with, uh, Joe and Greg and, um, with, uh, with Marty and, and with Anna, I see it, uh, only because both of them were on my site, uh, Greg and Anna were on my site. Um, and so I saw the, the relationship. I saw I was really uh, involved in the communication. I got a great lens of, of what they're thinking, what they're. Um, so I'm kind of the new kid on this on the block right here. But I'm so glad because I, I feel like I can um, go forward and transcend some of those caveats to my own site leadership. At the same time, I would tell you that um, there is a need for a productive conflict in that things aren't all that perfect even though we have evolved there's a lot of uh, uh, things that we want to put in place and um, I, I'll just kind of share this story with you you know having having Greg on our campus and, ha and on my campus um, I there was a stigma uh, uh, in terms of their repu uh, a reputation that was kind of heavy in terms of the union based and so from afar I would always watch being a new principal in this site I was always watching how our staff would interact with them or they would go with, to them for kind of problem solving or issues. And I would kind of stay, I was felt like I was on the sidelines waiting to um, uh, respond or react to whatever, something that was kind of formulating. And then I just started thinking, who is this guy, this wizard of Oz that's kind of hiding over there, just like everybody's gravitating to him. <laughs> and the more, the more I found who this person was, I gotta tell you is that we, we at even our own site, once you have that relationship and that bond and that trust and that, you know, you can, 
you can have those those conversations. I found Greg to be very insightful. And like Dr. Hernandez mentioned, we have a lot of things in common. He's passionate about student achievement. And that really is why, you know, I wake up in the morning and that's my why. And so hearing that from Greg, it just really made me think that, you know, people, people want to see drama in terms of two forces collide and saying, okay, we're going to divide. But what if two forces were synced in and we were making a, uh, uh, articulating the same thing in terms of our, our site. So I think that was one of the things that really kind of made me um, be very intentional about my work. I was very intentional about um, building trust and collaboration with my site leader. There was, there was, it was calculated. I'm going to go and see him at this time, at this point, and we're going to talk. And so you can't, in order to build that trust in that relationship, absolutely, you got to, you got to make sure that you're intentional about it. And then also, you know, not that we saw, you know, eye to eye on things or, I mean, he would tell you, he would tell you that, you know, we had to do some productive conflict. And I love the fact that we could do that and then call it, call each other at the end of the day, I, I would call him. I would call him. And I think we still call once uh, we call each other like once a week, just to kind of build some capacity. And I think, I think these problems allow us to kind of grow capacity, but also practice, practice uh, partnership, right? People want to see that and people want to hear that. What does it look like? What does it sound like? And I think by um, being very transparent and very visible, I think um, that's been very helpful for me on a site level and making sure that those people have influenced that I have connection with them at the same notion that we're, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna have uh, some time together. So. I, 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 I'm very optimistic. I don't know. I, I've been very privy to, to this, Gustavo. I don't know if my other site leaders uh, in terms of principles would feel the same way um, uh, in terms of what LMI represents and what it stands for and what it is and how it kind of bleeds over into the, the site and building the culture and the climate. I, I'm glad I'm involved in this. I, I, I see this, this firsthand. So um, at, uh, again, I'm very energized about that. I like the idea of uh, practicing partnership, right? It's a process and you can't capture all of your leaders all at once. You can't capture everybody all at once. Like uh, Greg and Joe were mentioning, it took three years to really get past that stigma. So we can imagine that this is a process that you continually have to water and really try to see grow. So I'm gonna turn over to the <clears throat> topic of the, of the year, I suppose is how, um, how have it, has your labor uh, management team been doing during COVID? What has your uh, labor management team um, or how has your labor management team addressed closings, reopenings, distance learning, safety issues? I could, could probably go on and on and on. I wanna open it up to everybody and see um, <laughs> how has your team really approached uh, the last eight to nine months? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to start with the word uh, together. We, we've navigated this together, and that means uh, frequent meetings, regular meetings, lots of conversations, because as you know, it seems like at every turn, there's a new challenge and obstacle. And so, you know, we, we, have, we have done this. I think the, the whole uh, LMI and the collaboration that we've worked and, and, and the trust and, and that productive conflict, all those pieces this is like a test for us, okay? Is this, what's it gonna look like in this arena? And I'm gonna have to say, I, I commented already on the, <clears throat> on the chat board, I can't imagine us not having this kind of collaboration and going through a pandemic. It'd have to be like a nightmare. <laughs> and, with, and so we're so, we're so grateful that we can have that, that communication. I would just say there's the bigger piece about reopening and, and, the, and the, the schools and, and the learning. There's also, I think if you have systems in place that are that you use for problem solving, it doesn't matter whether you're in COVID times or you're in, I mean, I dealt with a number of things today that with uh, Greg in the last week uh, with Greg and Anna, uh, we're on the phone, we're texting each other all the time. So uh, a, a problem came up today about flexing schedules or classified folks have had to flex some schedules. If they flex into a higher classification or higher range, they're paid at the higher range. We discovered we had two noon duty people who've been uh, in the capacity of IAs since September. 
and they need to be paid at that higher range. Well, I don't sit back and just wait for Anna to discover it and find out and come tell me about it. I've been told about it and I just tell her flat out, I just send an email, hey, we discovered this today, we're gonna remedy it. It goes to payroll just about the same time it goes to Anna. So we saw, that's how we, we just, it rolls all the time. And, and so I think, uh whether the problems are related again related to COVID or their the daily problems that we always had when you have good systems in place uh, i was looking at anna too that one of the challenges is uh, they're about to csea is about to have a leadership change so with csea that leadership changes frequently so it is a constant a continual uh, uh perpetual you know <laughs> revolving door so so needing to get in and i would say when we first started working together it wasn't what it is today it's 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 improved it improves with time um but you, you both sides have to work diligently at it yeah i want to mention here before i forget and i think greg and anna have a lot to say too we spent four days in a very large room about seven or eight people with Greg and Anna and, and our uh, facilities and custodial supervisor and anyway, our leadership, um, four days just working out the details of a health and safety plan for reopening schools, four days. We had it that detailed because that was the most important thing that was on, on, on the minds of everybody and coming back. How do we keep our kids safe? How do we keep staff safe? That's a big investment of time. So as we talk about how this works, you have to be willing to invest the time and bring people together in a safe way to have those conversations. Um, I've just, someone just asked a question. Did you use an improvement science as one of the systems you use for your partnership? Um, I also want to uh, mention ABC School District. So they were one of the other first places that we went. And I think we were all there. And I, I, we were probably asking the same question. How do we get started? And someone said just, and we were watching these relationships and how close the superintendent, uh, when she spoke about the places that she was, and our superintendent is that. He is, is in a lot of places. But um find a problem and, and work on it. So there, I would love to say that we use an improvement science or we're sophisticated in that, we weren't. We just got in and started, we started meeting, we started, we did put our meet and confer in place. Um, you know, we, and we did put some, some site problem solving systems in place so that people wanted, the grand design is to have people solve at the lower level, which is still working pretty well. Uh, but when it comes up to a higher level, we have systems for that too. So um, it's it's more informal, I would say, but it, it does um, it does require effort and con consistent and constant communication. When Anna and I first started meeting, or Greg, they would come formally to the office and make a request to see me. And I would always break. I, whatever I was doing, most of the time, if I could, I would stop. Uh, now I hardly, I don't see them as much because of COVID, but now we're in, a, we're on our phones. It's, it's, you know, I, we gave our cell phone numbers up, you know, we, there was a, a, and so that's a much easier and it's a, it's less formal than not that I don't enjoy meeting with them in person and in a non COVID time we would, but it's become very informal, low level problem solving and we stay ahead of it. I like the intentionality of behind it all, right? Putting such systems and structures. Greg, I'll turn to you. Uh, what was, what was your feeling as COVID was starting and your uh, take on the, um, the approach by the district. Again, it goes back to the systems that we had put in place. I think the biggest one is um, the meet and confer. And I'll kind of explain that a little bit more. Uh, we kind of did uh, uh, roll alike. So like Dr. Joe and myself, uh, we have a scheduled weekly meeting, which we talk every day because something <laughs> happens. We have a scheduled meeting every week. Uh, I know Marty has, has her meetings. So especially when COVID uh, started and, and all those conversations happened, um, before we could get our teams together, I already knew what was going on. I know what Dr. Joe was thinking. He knew what I was thinking about, you know, how to solve the issues, you know, in person, you know, virtual learning, uh, doing the food search, like all the issues that came up. We had already talked about it maybe two or three times before we got to the groups. Um, and, and really the trust, and I, I know trust, it's hard to put a definition on trust. Um, and Dr. Joe or Marty, you guys can correct me, but um, we, we went a long time with an open MOU. Uh, we sat down, we typed up some parameters as far as the duties of, of staff, of teachers, and we didn't vote, the union didn't vote. Uh, we didn't actually formally sign it and make it in stone. It was just an open working MOU because I trust uh, Dr. Joe enough that he's not going to try to squeeze anything out of us or do anything, you know, that, that we didn't talk about. 
and he was open enough to to leave that open for our for our side. So, and I know that you know trust. Everybody says, "Well, trust, trust." You know, how do you trust somebody? Um, that's the ultimate trust right there to, to run our district. Joe, how long did we do that? Was that for the first two months or three months? You know, we... Greg, basically when we do our MOU, we were doing it on the Google Doc as we were all, all talking. Mm -hmm. the, the document was done as in conversation, not like, here's the document, what do you think? We didn't trade documents, we did yeah. it together. Yeah. yeah, but it was really not a formal, formal MOU, mm -hmm. like per se, the, you know, all the teachers. Now we, we eventually had them sign a, a MOU or vote on an MOU. Um, and really the teams, uh, we called our, our small teams together, uh, for a meeting. Uh, this was b before the closure, what March 13th was the closure. I want to say two weeks before we pulled the team together and met, uh, and that really saved us. I think to have everybody, the leaders all on the same page, the principals, everybody kind of knew what was coming. Um, I'll let Anna go. I don't want to take all the time. Right. And, and we shared some, uh, joint communications and sample yeah. MOUs there, but Anna, this has been, a very different year for classified members, right? It's, it's completely different than the approach that teachers have been taking. What have you seen from your members and what have you seen as a participant in the labor management team? Well, when, as soon as COVID hit, I mean, we went into hiding, Dr. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> then we, we got in the Zoom within a week and we wrote up uh, an MOU like, you know, and we approved it just without the members first, you know, and we, we told doctor, you know, we spoke and we go, we need to unite, you know, we need to come together and make it happen. You know, we had to start serving food. People were scared, panicking, fear, you know, but I told them, you know what? Our members are here wherever we need to, you know, uh, come together and go do multitask, go to different job duties you know we're here you know we stepped it up as classified you know and we've been there on the on the fire line since then you know but you know everybody came together and and the unity you know the communication is a big part and the trust and the district was there for our needs you know for our safety you know when anything we ask that we need uh, for our members, uh, for their safety, to be able to do their job duties, you know, till now I can say it's it's been here. You know, we haven't lacked that. You know, so you know they they they've we both learned to listen to each other, and he's taken action, and we have also in the needs of both sides. You know, and so far it's been working. I think uh, also our management team, our operational supervisors, myself, business officer, superintendent, we were had our, our blue jeans on and we were making visits weekly or if not daily to food services, to our maintenance operations, warehouses. We were taking treats by for them. We were giving them the pep talk. We were there. We stayed. We were here always present with them. So they knew that they were supported. Um, I hope that they felt that uh, just our praise to our classified unit. They they. Um, have been grateful to have work and that we easily got uh, flexed schedules are not part of the regular routine. They don't like flex schedules in a normal world, but in this world, they were very quick to move to, to flex schedules. I have a job. I'm grateful that at this point in time, I have a job to give hand me a toilet brush or a, you know, a rag and a disinfectant bottle <clears throat> and I will, I will go where you need me to go. And so they've been really great. And, um, but same with certificated, actually, you know, we've, we've worked through it really well. The agility, right? The agility that has come up from everybody. Jesse, I'm gonna end with you with the formal questions and then I'll invite Ed to join us. <clears throat> so oh, what was your uh, viewpoint and what were you hearing from your um, colleagues uh, at different school sites? And uh, I might put you on the spot and ask you what might be one concrete recommendation you might wanna tell other leaders uh, on the call? Perfect. Thanks, Gustavo. I, I think, you know, here's the, if I can just kind of uh, be very transparent. The fallacy is that once you sign an MOU, everybody agrees to it, right? <laughs> it, that, that's a fallacy because um, when you have an MOU and agreement, you would, you, you're you living by that here in the, here at the site. And so here's where, here's where all the work comes into play, right? The, the, you set past practices already in motion your credibility, the level of influence, hey, we got you, we got this, right? If you didn't have that, 
then I could see some like, well, I never agreed to that. We never, how are we gonna do this? It's gonna be very, uh, very um, complicated. I think we set ourselves our frame right now. It set itself to really kind of have that, that, that level of comfort in terms of, okay, leaders really, under, really leaders are making some decisions, but the best interest of our students and staff. I think that was so key. Um, mm -hmm. Knowing full well that not all people agreed to the MOU, right? But at the same time, they understood the process, understood that people had voice in it. The thing that I would leave with you as a, as a leader um, and specifically at a site level is that to encourage that trust as, as Greg had mentioned, it's, you know, I wish I can buy it. Uh, you can't buy that stuff. But to encourage that, you have to be really vulnerable first. You as a leader have to be vulnerable because it, it requires you, it, sometimes it does require you to lose some face in front of others. But if, uh, but, but if you don't do that, you won't, you won't have others to take that risk as well to be vulnerable. So you, you as a leader have to be vulnerable as first. And I think for me, that has played a lot of dividends in terms of all the decisions that are being made is that, hey, you know what? I don't have the answer, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna go forth and take some risk. And you know, and if I fumble and I throw an interception, you guys got me, right? And mm -hmm. so I just kind of feel the same way. If I don't model that, then my folks can't take those risks, right? And so I, I, I leave you with that. That's something that I learned in, in building relationships with others is that just be uh, genuine and be very transparent. The psychological safety, right, is so yeah. important. So I'm gonna invite Ed to join us to see if we have any questions from the chat. If you haven't already, we invite you to put any questions in there. Uh, Ed, uh, any questions come up from uh, the chat? Yeah, there are uh, a couple. Uh, there was an interesting one about uh, actually from uh, Laura Gerber, a union president uh, down in Mountain View who we've worked with, who was talking about the issue of kind of just the isolation of this moment in time uh, and how you've addressed that is as part of your problem solving and, and needing to work together. And uh, and then maybe we can also uh, touch on, because I know we're getting we're out of, running out of time, uh, touch on kind of where you think you need to go. What are, the, what are still some of the issues that need to get addressed? All, all this is a continuous work in progress. Right, I, I, I tried to answer that on the, on the chat, but one of the things that we've done is number one, we meet and call each other often. We do, and, and because of the pandemic, that's even increased you know, twofold or even tenfold. So, so for us at the, at the district level with, with our leadership group, we really don't feel as isolated. What our focus has been though, has been at the site level to make sure that our teachers and staff don't feel isolated. So, so one of the things that we did at, at the sites, for example, we got, a, we got a, a donation from a local bank to promote um, uh, drive-through barbecues and, and just social gatherings and distant gatherings to keep people connected. And, and we saw early on that this, this thing was just weighing heavy on people's hearts. And the good news that I have to tell you now, I got another donation <laughs> that we're going to use from the, from the same bank. And, and by the way, you know, both, both our teachers and CSA have contributed to this pot at different times so that we can have these times. It's important that we stay connected and there's almost no better way than, than, than food. The second part of your question, Ed, and, and from the person at, Grant, at Mountain View, we were talking about a change in culture. And we're talking about you know, the collaboration is a big part of our the, the Dainuba culture. Part of the challenges is, is it, that we don't lose that culture, that it becomes uh, embedded, uh, that the collaboration becomes embedded so that when I leave or Greg leaves or Anna leaves, that that just rolls forward and onward. We don't want to lose that. And so maintaining that is where we're at right now as a district, because there will be changes. And we want to make sure that that culture does not change. Thanks, Joe. And um, I know we're getting short on time. Uh, I wanted to maybe uh, throw this back to uh, Julie, um, who's had a chance to you know, do, do research at the state and for national organizations and seen, you know, work across the, the country, across the state to 
give us give us your thoughts of kind of where we're at, where where what you've seen in Dinuba, and how this may apply to help support other uh, labor management teams. Well, I hope we see more Dinubas. The um, I'm now going to offend people from the Sacramento community, not Sacramento School District. The narrative in Sacramento is that unions are the problem around COVID, around school reopening, around distance learning. And everything we've learned about Dinuba and frankly, other districts in which we've been doing some research says that's not true. So the extent to which the Dinubas of the world can make their stories more evident that sh and show the importance of labor management collaboration to get through a crisis like COVID it is all the more important now, I think. Thanks, Julian. We're, we're excited to see uh, some of your additional new research with, uh, with multiple districts coming out uh, sometime uh, early next year and, uh, and continuing to do more of these spotlight uh, stories of additional districts. And we will continue to bring those stories to folks within the uh, Labor Management uh, Initiative Network. So um, I just want to uh, throw this back as we close out to, to uh, Gustavo and with just a huge thanks to the Dinuba team um, for all of their great work and for struggling through to, to make things significantly better for their community. I, I just want to add to this is a district whose who's kind of motto and focus is ending uh, generational poverty through public education. And I think that says a lot about kind of where their heart is, where their values are. And uh, it's, you know, they're, they're, they're inspiring. They're doing some hard, heavy lifting and some really, really great work out there. So thank you. And uh, Gustavo. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Um, so we really, really appreciate your time. We know how busy everyone is. So as we see them drop out of the spotlight, we're going to ask a quick favor from everyone on the call. We're going to ask you to stay on for just one more minute. We're going to ask you if you can give us some feedback for today. So one of the things we want to know is, are teams ready to come back to labor management team um, convenings? So if you could take a, a minute or maybe a minute and a half and help us know that it, help us um, really prep for the upcoming year. We've taken a few months off and made sure that everybody has had their time to, to really meet the needs of the current um, time here. So if you can give us some feedback, that'd be great. As you do that, we're gonna... And um, we also have a link here for the Calamai videos. The webinar today is gonna be uh, posted on this YouTube site. We also have accumulation of all of our other videos. We invite you to take a look. You could just put your phone, your camera over that um, QR link. We also put the link in the chat if you need to. Right. And as you complete your, um, your poll, we just want to thank you. Thank you from Ed and I and everybody at CDE Foundation and the Calamai team for joining us today. We're gonna to try to continue bringing you these great webinars and start bringing you convenings over the next um, year. We wish you a very good end of the semester and a very good holiday break. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.